we had uh, on 12th of October uh, the, 12, the fifth ministerial meeting under the Rwanda process between DRC uh, and Rwanda under the facilitation of uh, uh, Angola. Uh, that was the fifth ministerial meeting, uh, but uh, to understand uh, the outcome of that meeting, it's important to go back to the fourth ministerial meeting that took place on 14th of uh, September. During that meeting, we, we had, the meeting was blocked, I would say. We were in an impasse uh, because uh, my colleague from DRC had uh, opposed a harmonized plan that was agreed on by uh, intelligence expert of the three countries uh, in a meeting held in the Rubavu on 30th of, uh, 29th and 30th of uh, August. Uh, that was uh, uh, actually a breakthrough because uh, that, uh, the plan was a detailed plan with a timeline on how to conduct operations against the FDLR, this genocidal force uh, that committed genocide against the Tutsi in Rwanda, and uh, then which could be uh, followed by the lifting of uh, Rwanda's security and defense measures. But unfortunately, while I supported on behalf of Rwanda that plan, my colleague from uh, DRC had rejected that plan, uh, arguing that uh, for her and for DRC, uh, the operations should be uh, si uh, simultaneous, take, uh, held or conducted at the same time. Then uh, she also opposed at that time that uh, we uh, expert, intelligence experts and military experts are convened again to adopt a concept of Operation CONOPS that could go into details of that plan. But on the fifth meeting, which uh, we are talking about, which was held on 12th of October, uh, last Saturday, uh, we uh, agreed on several issues. First, we agreed to support the current ceasefire, the ceasefire between the warring parties in Eastern DRC, uh, and then we called on the parties uh, to uh, respect that ceasefire, uh, which um, entered into force uh, on 4th of uh, August. Uh, that is number one. And then number two, we reiterated our disagreement on the harmonized plan I was talking about. Rwanda uh, reiterated its support to that plan as adopted by experts of the three countries. And the DRC uh, presented uh, an alternative plan that could ensure simultaneity of, of the operations. Uh, so we reiterated our disagreement on this, uh, on this plan. But as we didn't agree on the sequencing of events, we at least agreed on the activities and responsibilities of parties. So the activities contained in the plan, we all agreed, uh, including those who are responsible of uh, carrying them out. So we agreed on, the, on those activities, and then we tasked the facilitator Angola to prepare a concept of operations, the CONOPS, uh, uh, basing on um, the contributions of the two countries, DRC and Rwanda, and also taking into account their concerns. We gave them the date of 26th of October to provide that CONOPS. And then on 30th of October, we, uh, we, we convened a meeting of experts of the three countries to review that CONOPS prepared by the facilitator, and which would uh, later on be submitted to the, to, to the minister, to the ministerial meeting. And uh, so we agreed uh, on that, and we believe that that could, be, could help us to, uh, to, to have more, uh, uh, I would say, uh, more details on the operations to be conducted uh, against uh, the FDLR, FDLR, which could lead also to the lifting of our uh, defense and uh, security measures. This is, in general, the, the, the outcome of the meeting of, uh, of last Saturday.
Actually, the solution to this crisis in Eastern uh, DRC is not that complicated when you look at it. Uh, uh, there, it it's, uh, we need uh, political will, just political will, on the side uh, of DRC uh, to find a lasting solution to the crisis. And then there are three, uh, three uh, areas or three steps that needs to be undertaken by DRC. First, the government of the DRC needs to own up the conflict in Eastern DRC and uh, stop this scapegoating of Rwanda, these uh, endless accusations uh, against Rwanda uh, about this crisis in, in, in uh, bilateral visits, in, uh, in uh, uh, ministerial meetings of ministers of sport, of environment, of uh, agriculture. They always accuse Rwanda, which is inappropriate. So we request the DRC to, really to own up uh, this crisis. They even went as far as uh, trying to oppose our support to Mozambique because we have troops there. Uh, then they, they opposed the uh, support by the, the European Union to this, to this uh, force, which is for not Rwandans, but Mozambican, the people of Mozambique. So they should own up this crisis and uh, address the root causes of the issue of the M23. And we know the issue of the M23, what it is, because they are defending a community, the Congolese uh, Tutsi, who are there not because of Rwanda, but because of the colonial borders that were drawn uh, uh, more than a century uh, ago. Uh, and uh, we have uh, uh, Congolese of Rwandan culture, Rwandan heritage, but who are Congolese nonetheless. So, and in the past, in the history of DRC and Zaire before DRC, they were disenfranchised, uh, they, they uh, didn't, uh, they, were, they were given citizenship and then that citizenship later on was withdrawn and now we, we are facing hate speech, discrimination, persecution. So it's an issue that they need to address uh, tackling the root causes of the crisis. And for that, they need to engage into direct dialogue with that movement in order, of course, to, to, to find a really a lasting uh, solution to that crisis. That is number one, the, the, the issue of the M23, and then the need for uh, DRC to own up this crisis. And then second is uh, the FDLR, those uh, genocidaires who are still there, who uh, not only were not uh, disarmed uh, or moved uh, away from the border after the genocide against the Tutsi, but who are now embedded into the army, the Congolese army. There are collaboration, daily collaboration between FDLR and, and the FRDC. And uh, we believe that uh, if the DRC wants to uh, uh, solve uh, this, uh, the, the, the conflict in Eastern DRC, it needs really to get uh, to cut this link with uh, the FDLR and uh, neutralize them with the support of the international community, because the international community, even Rwanda, we, we are willing to support them uh, dealing with the FDLR. But for that, as I told you, there, there is a need of political will and good faith by, by um, the FRDC. And then third, there are, we have an issue with foreign forces that are in Eastern DRC. There are, of course, also militias. There was a Lendo, uh, which uh, are in, in DRC and which also share the same genocide ideology with uh, the FDLR, and there is uh, the f uh, foreign forces, mainly Burundian forces, sharing the same ideology with, uh, who were deployed in Eastern DRC. And, and there are also the Sami DRC, the forces of SADC, who were who deployed with an offensive mandate to work with a coalition that includes FDLR genocide, which is unacceptable. And then there are uh, European mercenaries, which were deployed to support the FRDC uh, coalition uh, in total violation of uh, a convention of the UN and also a convention of uh, the OAU, which uh, became the, uh, the AU. So we would appeal on those countries, including in the countries in Europe, to think twice about what they are doing in Eastern DRC because it doesn't help uh, uh, peace 
Because what we wish in Eastern DRC, what we have uh, expressed on several occasions, that we need a political solution. So those forces are not helping uh, Congo, they are not helping the region in, uh, in uh, finding that uh, lasting solution for Eastern DRC.